Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thought I'd do a quick uh, video on my dolly trailer. So I built this about four years ago now. Um, I got to the point where I didn't have as much time in life to be able to do kind of the road warrior thing and drive my off-road toys um, to and from the trail or to and from big trips. And so it was a lot, um, I never really liked trailering. I still don't <laughs> really love trailering. I think it's just a different experience. Um, and I, I wanted something different. I had had trailers in the past that were like off the shelf, um, you know, commercial style trailers, like a typical, you know, 14 foot dual axle trailer. Um, probably not the nicest ones, but, um, didn't, didn't really have the best experience with that. I live in, uh, an in-town setting and I have limited space as you can see. So this is my little alley, um, parking spot that I have, um, alongside the garage. And so I only have a limited amount of space. Um, and so I wanted a smaller trailer that was still heavy duty enough to, to tow what I wanted. And that, uh, you know, was the, my flatty, uh, the LX 45 at that point, I, I have a buggy in the works. Um, so it had to kind of be able to fit a, a variety of vehicles, but I wanted it to be specialized more towards being, uh, a vehicle trailer. And so, uh, I couldn't find anything in an off the shelf, uh, package that I liked. Uh, and what I ended up doing was starting from scratch. So, I designed this trailer um, in uh, SolidWorks uh, CAD. Uh, that was what I do professionally um, for many, many years, uh, a mechanical engineer. So uh, that part wasn't the, the hard part per se, uh, but as I started to look into what I wanted, I started getting further and further away from normal. And so what this ended up being was a very simplified uh, trailer, single axle, uh, which was one of those things that everybody, you know, was, was against, I guess, when I started talking about it on social media. And then that evolved in order to get the trailer to be as low as I wanted. So I wanted to be able to drive on and off the trailer uh, without ramps. I wanted it to be quick and easy. Um, so, uh, in order to get the trailer as low as I wanted, in addition to making it more simple, I decided to do a rigid mounted axle. So this trailer does not have any suspension whatsoever. The axle goes directly through the main frame rail, um, which is two by six, uh, three sixteenths material. And that allowed me to get the trailer very, very low. Uh, and since the suspension doesn't move, um, all the clearances kind of stay the same and the way the geometry worked out, uh, I don't really, even with the trailer being very low, I don't have problems with it dragging on the ground or whatever. Uh, when I did the math on the weight distribution of the trailer, I will say that the rear axle ended up being, I call it almost uncomfortably rearward, rearward. And that was in order to preserve a decent amount of tongue weight, no matter which vehicle was on the trailer. Uh, so that's just kind of a compromise in the design. And I do think that makes a single actual trailer behave better is to err on the side of a little bit more tongue weight. And for me, I have a, uh, my, my normal tow vehicle, if you will, is a, is a regular cab long bed uh, F350 Ford pickup. Not a big pickup, but a heavy duty one and it doesn't care pretty much whatsoever with a little bit of extra tongue weight. I try and keep the tongue weight in that 15% range um, and that seems to work out pretty well for the weights of vehicles that I'm putting on the trailer. The axle itself, 
Uh, I just bought the spindles and they are just welded into a uh, couple pieces actually of DOM tubing. The main tube is a uh, three and a half inch diameter quarter wall. It steps down um, to three inch quarter wall and then to the spindle. That all happens in an outward uh, uh, frame rail section to help spread that uh, leverage load of the end, the tire uh, as close to the spindle as possible. Uh, and that also gives me a little spot where the tire drives over the, the axle in between the tires for certain size vehicles. Uh, the larger vehicles on this, in order to keep the track width kind of reasonable, uh, do have to go over the tire. But I don't find that to be, you know, a big problem or anything. Uh, and then more normal, smaller vehicles uh, can fit between the tires and then it's, you know, you're only driving over a, a small hump. It is a design where the, it's, I call it a ladder, um, basically it's rungs of the, uh, where the tires fit and those are down in a pocket outside of the main frame rail. And so there's a, a variety of sizes you can fit in there but there is a minimum and a maximum because the tire sits down in a pocket uh, but i find that to be a it gets the vehicle much much lower to the ground and more stable uh, and then b if if the vehicle was to shift side to side or whatever there is something on either side to stop the tire from moving uh, i do uh, commonly strap from the rungs i'll call them of the ladder uh, where the where you drive and I go up and over the, the tire uh, in all, all four tires. And so I am always strapping to the, sus to the tire, letting the suspension of the vehicle work as the damper. So with, with no suspension on the trailer, the vehicle acts as the damper. And you can think of it generally as sprung, unsprung weight in a typical vehicle. It's just on a larger scale. Uh, so that allows the trailer to be damped by the full suspension of the vehicle, including the shocks uh, and all the things that trailers don't normally have. Uh, so I find this to be a very good system. Uh, it's very well proven at this point. I've had this trailer for four years now. I've done, I think roughly, you know, 15, 20,000 miles with it now. Uh, it's been back and forth from Colorado to California at least three times that I can remember, uh, and then many trips to, you know, call local trips to like Sand Hollow, Moab, um, you know, around Colorado, things like that. Um, so I haven't had any problems with it at all. Uh, I do run a very, uh, the axle ends are a 7,000 pound eight lug uh, spindle uh, bearing hub setup with a 12 inch uh, drum brake, electric drum brake, uh, and I haven't had any problems with any of that stuff in this configuration. I do run a 4,400 pound each rated tire and wheel package. Uh, the wheels are an aluminum, a little bit less weight from Sendell wheels, and then the tires are a uh, Milestar uh, Steel Pro commercial rated uh, tire. Um, and those have been fantastic. I don't, I don't run any, uh, camber if you will. So most trailer axles have a, have a bow in them. And then when they're loaded, supposedly that's supposed to be zero, um, camber, uh, this runs zero camber and then basically nothing moves because everything is so rigid. Uh, and that's seemed to, to work out very well. I've had, you know, no tire wear problems, uh, things like that. Uh, the trailer ended up being with the 7,000 pound axle, tires, wheels, complete wired. Everything uh, was uh, 1,030 pounds. So it's not a super light trailer. I definitely, looking back on it, I could have, there is ways you could make it lighter and I would feel more comfortable with that. But going into this, I didn't really know. So I erred a little bit on the side of, of overkill, but still a 1,000 pound trailer with a 7,000 pound axle isn't 
you know, is, is still on the light end of things. Uh, I find it tows fantastic. Uh, I love the small size. I can move it around by myself. Uh, uh, it's very easy to load and unload the vehicle because there's no ramps to worry about. Uh, if I do have what would call like one, a lot of times when I was, or, or something that came up when I was designing this was, you know, well, what if the vehicle is wounded um, and you need to get it on? So um, the plan for that is essentially if you air down the tires on the trailer and jack up the truck uh, hitch side slightly, you can actually set the bumper of the trailer on the ground. And then you could, you know, winch pull uh, a wounded vehicle up onto the trailer. I did design it, and I never followed through with it. But um, there is a way to do uh, wooden bucks that would drop in the uh, the pockets where the tires ride to make it a level uh, trailer, uh, where you wouldn't be driving in the pockets and stuff like that. I haven't found a need for that yet. Uh, maybe someday if I do a car or something like that, I, I will look at that more. Um, something with, with less clearance, uh, stock flat fender or something with small tires maybe. But overall, um, yeah, so there's definitely, uh, I just got done with a trip to California in it, did what I'm calling the double doozy trip. So we went to California around the Deucey Ursham Trail. Uh, I actually took the time on the way back to get a little bit of video of how this tra trailer uh, looks with a vehicle loaded on it. Um, going down the road and you can see the how the suspension on the vehicle that's being towed on the trailer is moving and absorbing those impacts and across some some fairly rough roads um, uh, that were you know kind of arizona four corners area uh, where i would think that you would see you know anything that was jarring or 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 like that and i just don't get that feeling from this trailer so
So yeah, overall, very happy with this trailer. Uh, even though I still don't really like trailerine, it's just for me, um, I don't know, too many, too many things, you know, trailer, truck, vehicle, more things to maintain. Um, but if I'm going to trailer and if I can't drive the vehicle on the road, you know, something that's kind of impractical, this is the way I want to do it. And I'm trying to think what else to share with you. Uh, some details. Uh, it does have a Demco auto latch hitch on it. It's a two and five sixteenths ball. I think it's a 10,000 pound rated um, uh, hitch assembly and uh, a nice, they call it like the ultimate trailer jack, uh, which is like easy to take in and out, swap the foot, um, all those things. It bolts right into the tongue. Um, other than that, it's pretty, pretty simple. I did add some, uh, I don't know if you can see them here, but I did add some additional tie down points. Um, basically when, when larger vehicles are on, on the trailer and you push the front tires up, um, getting a place to put the straps was a little bit of a pain. So I added, um, some additional forward points to hook the straps. Um, but that's really the only change I've made to it. I do wish I would have, um, painted it when I was doing it, but I was in a rush, uh, for a trip as kind of always happens. Uh, but I do live in the Southwest and I mean, as you can see, this is four years old and it's not really that rusty or anything. Someday I might throw some rust proofer on it. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, um, definitely drop a comment below and you know, this, <laughs> it was funny. Like I usually share a lot of details about things when I build them through the process. Uh, and when I was going through the design process on this, there was so much negative feedback, um, you know, kind of the hater level stuff that I kind of lost interest in sharing. And I just built the dang thing and then proceeded to test it for a couple years. And it's always worked great. Um, yeah. So that's the story of the dolly trailer. And if you want me to cover anything specifically, um, yeah, like I said, drop a comment uh, or a question and sure sure there'll still be people that say it doesn't work but here i am you know four years later twenty thousand miles later it's a great system uh, i've had no problems with it and uh that's the story of the dolly trailer thanks guys we'll catch you on the next one Thank you.